the Carrera Panamericano was one of the most adventurous and perhaps most dangerous of all road races. Run from 1950 through 1954, the race was run over several stages on consecutive days and was launched to promote the Pan American Highway in Mexico that would link Central and North America. 132 cars were entered in the first race, the majority being big American sedans. But notable among the entrants were Italian Formula One drivers Piero Taruffi and Felici Bonetto in a pair of Alfa Romeo 6C2500 coupes. From France came Jean Travoux with a Delahaye Type 175. One cannot begin to speak about the Carrera without mention of Bill Strop, who co-drove with Johnny Mance in 1950 and was well known for the Lincolns he prepared. Sharon Baker was part of Bill Strop's crew. Six Lincolns and four Fords came directly from the two assembly plants in California and Los Angeles and were dropped off by the trucks. From that day on, we went to work each evening or each day and worked on those cars and stripped them out, and took everything out of them that wasn't to be used in the race cars and set them up to what standards and what Bill Strop knew that the rules would be for 1954. The cars came with the three-speed uh, hydromatics. They were not built by Ford Motor Company. They were General Motors hydromatics. All the Lincolns in 1952, 53, and 54 had hydromatic transmissions in them. And at the time we got into Mexico City, Bill Zaring and I uh, were assigned to drive one of the two cars that had been driven from Tuxtla Gutierrez to Mexico City as testing. They were testing cars. They were the, they were the cars that were used in 1952 and 1953 and the drivers got to drive the roads from Tuxtla Gutierrez to Mexico City to test themselves and to be sure that they drove those cars exactly as the roller maps that they had to use as guides for the co-pilots. The co-pilots had roller maps that Bill Strop and others prepared prior to the race five to six months in advance to go down there and spend three months just driving test cars. If one has seen any photographs of the Carrera cars, they were likely to include the Lincoln of Ray Crawford with his family's grocery market named on the side of the car as sponsor. His was the highest placing Lincoln in the first two races. There are thousands and thousands of spectators on the road and they're forming what I would call a moving V because they're, they're in a V looking toward the car coming at them and as the car is proceeding toward them, the V opens up, and, but it, from his perspective, the perspective of the car, the camera in the car, all you see is a continuous V and people uh, crisscrossing at the very last minute. People always asked him at the end of uh, showing that film, uh, they would invariably ask this question and they said, what were you thinking about as you were driving through that sea of humanity? And my father was a wonderful public speaker and, and loved the attention, which is probably why. And he would do it so perfectly all the time. And I didn't get it as a kid, but he would pause as though that was the first time that he was hearing the question and think about it. And then he would look at the audience and he said, I guess I hope that my windshield wipers would work. The Carrera Panamericana ended with the last race in 1954. Some claim that the danger brought about its demise. But those times and those races had a Hemingway-esque quality that not only defied danger, but almost seemed to welcome it. Dr. Scully makes what I think is the better, if less romantic, explanation for the Carrera's termination. Politically, it, the, the new government of Mexico thought it wasn't a bad idea at all. But the problem was that the, the country had grown too used to having that transportation link open and closing the road down section at a time for a full day st literally stopped anything moving from north to south. And the economic impact at that stage of the game became very, very powerful. And of course, the, all the truckers and all of the producers and all of the 
consumers that were getting materials south on that road that would, couldn't get anything into their uh, stores or into their shops or anything else for the better part of a week was a, a serious economic uh, bind on them. In any case, the Carrera was over and we were never to see its kind again, though it lives on today as La Carrera Panamericana, a rally that to some would qualify as a road race. The Carrera Panamericana really lives as a legend for those who were there and participated or witnessed it, and now for those of you who enjoy this footage that we've brought to you. One could not hope to cover all of the stories of all of the drivers, their cars, and their crews in one document. We hope that with this series, most of their tales can be told and enjoyed by enthusiasts.